are shining bright above you. Children, go running. Night breezes seem to whisper, I love you. Birds singing in the sycamore tree. Dream a little dream of we're supposed to be looking for here. The world is full of obvious things which nobody by any chance ever observes. Sherlock Holmes. Welcome back, everyone. This is going to be my new Stranger Things Season 4 trailer. They're having this big Netflix to dum Comic-Con event. It's sort of their replacement for Comic-Con, so that's why we're getting all this footage and all these new trailers. So if you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. Obviously, this is all dropping next year. They haven't given us the exact release date. They're probably going to wait till early next year to drop another really big trailer to tell you exactly which day it's going to be dropping. But just starting at the beginning of the footage and working our way through shot by shot. There's a couple other clips that I haven't covered before that I'll also include in this too. Because we've gotten a couple teaser trailers for season 4 so far. But the first teaser trailer starts with what they're calling the Creel House teaser. Like in the preview where they were introducing the clip. They were saying we're on our former set where we used to film the Creel House stuff. But now it's just this living room. So Creel House, super important location. You're going to get a taste of it right now. And I'm warning you, it is very, very strange. And we hope you enjoy and uh, we'll see you soon. You will enjoy it. We're in this one. But it actually starts with a huge flashback to what seems like the 1950s, like this old timey flashback clip of a murder house called the Creel House. And this is probably the Creel family for what it's named. They play it like a typical family moves in all happily to this new house, but in typical horror genre fashion, it winds up being a murder house that's seemingly haunted, but because we're in the Stranger Things universe, a lot of what's happening in the house when it seems like it's haunted seems familiar to things that were happening in the earlier seasons of the show. Like as the old timey music continues to play, they start noticing weird things around the house and it kind of jump cuts forward in time. Like the little girl sees the dead animal in the yard. They're sitting at dinner and the electrical system starts going haywire and starts flashing. The radio cuts in and out. Then when we jump forward, it just seems like the guy winds up going crazy and killing the rest of his family. Then it cuts to present day with a version of the team basically being Ghostbusters. They even have the pin Ghostbusters. If you remember at the beginning of season two, they literally dressed up as the Ghostbusters for Halloween that year. And getting super meta with this, one of the kids from Stranger Things is in the Ghostbusters Afterlife movie. They're kind of doing the Stranger Things where it's a Ghostbusters team of little kids. It's Finn Wolfhard who plays Mike on Stranger Things, obviously playing a different character in the Ghostbusters universe. It's this really weird meta thing going on where they're parodying the Ghostbusters, referencing Ghostbusters stuff, but we actually have a Ghostbusters movie with a bunch of little kids in it. The circle of Easter eggs are now complete. But the thing you might have noticed here when the lights are flashing and things are going crazy in the house, the electrical systems are going all haywire. This actually seems very similar to what was happening in Joyce and Will's house when Will was in the upside down trying to contact his mother, flipping all the lights, trying to communicate with her to let her know that he was alive, just trapped in another dimension. So because this is a Stranger Things universe and we know that everything has its own version of itself in the Upside Down, there's a version of this house in the Upside Down, the team seems like it's investigating a way to get into the Upside Down inside this murder house. Like it's somewhere where the barrier between the normal world and the Upside Down is a little bit weaker. Like say underneath the Starcourt Mall and at the old Hawkins Lab that they closed the portal to at the end of last year when the big machine exploded. 
You may also remember way back a couple years ago in one of the early, early Stranger Things season four teaser trailers, there was a clock sound and people were like, is this Big Ben? It sounds like the Big Ben clock. Now, because we see the grandfather clock chiming in this teaser trailer in the Creel house, we know that that was what it was referencing. It's this grandfather clock. There were just all these questions about how they were going to connect with the Hopper storyline in Russia. We did actually get some new Hopper trailer footage in the last big teaser trailer with him in this flamethrower seemingly still inside that Russian prison. Like it kind of seems like he's still in Russia. The other really interesting thing about the set design here, even though it's obviously meant to look really creepy like a murder house typically would in a horror movie, the design on that stained glass window on the front door with the flower opening up kind of reminds you of the head of the Demogorgon opening up, like a really dangerous kind of flower. There was also a short teaser that they released the other day too with them investigating a bunch of news clippings, playing it as if Dustin and the group are investigating the murder house before they go visit it. As you can see, it's just hyping up the mystery of what's actually going on with this house. But like I said, a lot of these things that are happening here seem familiar to what was happening at Will and Joyce's house during season one when he was in the upside down trying to flip all the switches and communicate with her messing with the electronics. But the other really, really noticeable thing here at the beginning of this clip when all the kids walk in is that they are way older. Obviously in previous seasons, they had the two different storylines where you have the high schoolers, then you have the young kids. Now as they get older, there's all the jokes about how Steve has kind of adopted most of the kids. He's like super best friends with Dustin now, and a lot of the other kids just seem like they are high schoolers at this point. Even though they've all gotten the same amount older, Lucas just seems like he is way older than all the other kids, even though they're supposed to be about the same age. But you have Dustin, Steve, Max, Robin, who obviously is there with Steve because they're now working together. They're kind of like a little sub team by themselves. Nancy and Lucas. So we don't know where Eleven is in this clip. We saw some other footage of her with what seems like some government stooges trying to hold her back. There's another clip of them at a high school rally, like school has begun again at some point during the series as they all come back to town. I've already mentioned the new footage of Hopper with the flamethrower. And then we have the new footage of this person walking away from the car wreck that's burning in the middle of the street. So it's just a mishmash of a bunch of new scenes and obviously focusing on this Creel house is a really important location at what seems like the early part of the season. In the way they're hyping up this grandfather clock, they're just trying to make it seem like it has some deep connection to the upside down. Like I said, it just sounds like this is going to be a place where there'll be a weakness in the barrier between dimensions and the upside down. Weaker than you would find some other place because at some point they have to get to the upside down to fight the actual mind flare and defeat it in its home dimension. I think that's the whole idea is that like they could defeat it as many times as they want inside the normal world as it slowly has broken in over the couple of seasons. But like at the end of last year, that giant flesh goo monster was really just his avatar. So they may have defeated it, but they didn't kill the actual Mind Flayer itself. It was just sort of like a flesh puppet being controlled by the Mind Flayer from the upside down. The only thing we haven't really gotten in the last couple of big trailers is how they actually reconnect with Hopper. And you tell all the jokes about David Harbour in the Black Widow movie like, oh, he obviously went over to Russia, became Red Guardian, and that's where Hopper's been this whole time. But the way that David Harbour talks about the Hopper character, he says that this is just like the down and dirtiest that you've ever seen Hopper. Like it's actually a really, really solid season for Hopper. If you felt like the characters had some ups and downs in the previous seasons, even though he's been a main character the whole time. Like the closest you'll get to seeing full blown action hero Hopper. Obviously he's got to escape from that Russian prison. So if you remember that early Stranger Things season four trailer with Hopper on Chain Gang in Siberia, Russia, you have this character played by Jack and Hagar from Game of Thrones. Most people know him as Jack and Hagar. You may have seen him in some other series recently. He's a fairly prominent actor, but he's in at least a couple episodes during season four at the beginning of the season. He's only listed on IMDb for episodes one and two, but his name is Dimitri. And the way his character description reads is that he's someone who befriends Hopper. So it sounds like he winds up helping Hopper escape. Also relevant is the title of episode one. The reveal of the title of season four episode one is the Hellfire Club. So I'm assuming that this little Ghostbusters group that they put together, this murder mystery group trying to investigate things like the Scooby gang, they just wind up calling the Hellfire Club. Like this is a special new club that they've formed. 
There's a whole bunch more trailers that are going to be coming at this big Netflix event. I believe there's going to be a new Witcher Season 2 trailer later tonight, so I'll try to do a video for that as soon as possible as well. Make sure you enable alerts so you don't miss any of those videos, and of course I'll do more Stranger Things videos when they drop more trailer footage for that. But if you spotted any Easter eggs in this footage that I didn't talk about in the video, just write it below in the comments. Everyone click here to learn what's going on with the new Spider-Man No Way Home Marvel lawsuit, and click here for my brand new Eternals trailer for Kit Harington's Black Knight character. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video.